we're going to dive a little more into inverse trig functions today. So normally we look at a trig function and like y equals sine of x, cosine of x, or tangent of x. And if we look at our inverses, we know from algebra 2 we switch the x and the y and solve for y. Well, let's take a look at the sine specifically. If I switch the x and the y, the only way to get y by itself is to take the inverse sine of that function. And sometimes rather than writing sine what we look like to the negative 1 power, we say that's the arc sine of x is equal to y. So you'll notice the main difference between these two is the x and y is, is shifted. If we were to take and graph inverse functions, they would look very similar to these three that I have here. Now notice the inverse sine function. Okay, what I've done is on my x-axis, I now have the values of sine going from 1 to negative 1. And the angle values that we usually plug in on our horizontal are now on our vertical. So if you look at the graph, it still looks like a sine function, except it's going on the vertical axis. Likewise, the cosine function still looks like a cosine function. It's just the angle values are on the y-axis, and the values between 0 and 1, or the output values, are now on the x-axis because we're finding the inverses. Tangent, again, looks like the tangent function, except the angle values are going along the vertical, and the y values are going along the horizontal. Now you'll notice that none of these inverse functions, or in inverse graphs, are functions, because they don't pass a vertical line test. And in actuality, when you plug things into your calculator and it asks for inverse values, you're only going to get a small portion of answers. In fact, for sine, you're only going to get answers that answer the question between the graph's defined values for a function. So it cuts, and that kind of doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but what it basically does is it limits its output values to values between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. Cosine, on the other hand, limits its values between 0 and pi. Tangent also limits its values between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. I've summarized your calculator values on this next page. So we call these calculator values principal values. In other words, when we ask the calculator to find what angle gives us a sine or cosine value of, or when we ask for an arc sine or arc cosecant, arc tangent, what have you, the calculator is only going to spit out values between these ranges. So for sine, cosecant, tangent, and cotangent, the calculator is only going to spit values out between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, or negative 90 and 90 degrees. For cosine and secant, we're only going to get values between 0 and pi, or 0 and 180 degrees. And I'll show you how that plays out in these next problems. So if I'm asked to find the inverse cosine of a half, well, this is a unit circle problem. And I can do that by finding out where on the unit circle is the x value a half. Well, we know that cosine is the x value, so that's going to be somewhere in the fourth quadrant or the first quadrant and I know that's 60 degrees and 300 degrees. Now, those are the only values that will ever happen because we know we have infinitely many coterminal angles. So if I wanted to find all the values, and this implies this but doesn't necessarily say so, I say I go from 60 plus any 360 n value of that, and from 300 and any 360 n value of that, and n would be an integer in this case. So it's this angle and all its coterminals, this 300 angle, and all of its coterminals. We could also answer this in terms of pi's. We could say that for the 60 degrees, I'm at pi over 3 plus any 2 pi n value, and at 4, 5 pi over 3, and any 2 pi n value. Now, next, 
I'm asking the same question, except you notice it's written a little bit different. This C is capital. Capital implies principal values. And if I'm asked to find the principal values of the arc cosine of a half, I'm really only asking for a theta value between 0 and 180 degrees. So in this case, my only answer would be 60 degrees or pi over 3. None of the other values would count because it's a principal value. Let's do this again. You'll notice in this case, I have a capital T, so that's a principal value, capital C, principal value, and a capital A on the arc secant, so those are all principal values. So now all we have to know is where are we answering between. In this case, let's just do it in degrees for right now. This goes to negative 90 theta and 90 since it's a tangent function. All right, and we want to know where our tangent value is equivalent to 1 in this region. Well, I know that in order to have a tangent of 1, I have to have the same x and y, and they both have to be positive. So that's somewhere in the first quadrant, and I know that's at 45 degrees. If we were in radians, we could say that would be pi over 4. This is the only answer I need to give since we're talking principal values. Cosecant, once again, same area negative 90 to 90. And I need to know where the y value, in this case, is a half. My y value is going to be a half in the first and second quadrant. And I know that's at 30 degrees and 150 degrees. So I could say that. But in this case, the 150 gets ruled out because I'm only answering between 90 and negative 90. So my answer is only 30. And if we were in radians, I could say that's pi over 6. Not a problem. Finally, we're looking for an arc secant value whose principal value is between 0 and 180 degrees. And we know our secant value is a reciprocal of cosine. So it's somewhere over here. Not quite sure yet. Now I have 2 root 3 over 3. 2 root 3 over 3 is not something we see on the unit circle, but I know it's probably the reciprocal of 1 over root 3 over 2 of the negative nature. And let's just check to make sure. That's 2 over root 3. Rationalizing I get negative 2 root 3 over 3. So I'm correct. Now all we have to do is find out where my x value is negative root 3 over 2. Well, we know that's at 150 degrees or 5 pi over 6. And that's how we go about answering those. Because we have capitals, we only answer with one value rather than all possible values. Now, you'll notice we kind of have a compound of inverse functions here. We work inside parentheses first and then go outwards. You'll notice we end in each of these cases with the principal value. The inners are not asking what angles, it's asking for values. So we want to find, first of all, the sine of pi over 2. Well, we know pi over 2 is up at 90 degrees, and we need the y value there. We know that's 1. So what we have now is we have the arctan of 1. Since we're talking principal values of tangent, that's between negative 90. Well, we're going to use pi in this case, negative pi over 2, and pi over 2. So I know that I have to be in the first quadrant since it's positive, and I know I'm at pi over 4 since my x and y's have to be the same. So this would be my answer. We're looking for the cosine of 5 pi over 6. The cosine of 5 pi over 6 is negative root 3 over 2. So now I have the principal value 
of negative root 3 over 2 of sine. And again, I'm looking between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, except in this case, I'll put greater than or equals to sines in. I know in this case I'm talking about sine. So in this case, if I look at my circle, the sine value is negative somewhere down in the fourth quadrant. So I'm going to need a negative angle measure. Where is the sine negative root 3 over 2? Well, it's going to be at normally what would be what uh, 5 pi over 3, but we can't use 5 pi over 3 because that's outside of our bounds. So I'm going to have to use a negative pi over 3 value to describe that. And that's going to be our answer. Moving to the next example, I think. So multiple combinations. You'll notice inside I have two principal values. And we're finishing with to find the cosine. So for these two, I'm going to get thetas. And for the cosine, I'm going to get a value. So my answer is going to end in a value. To get a root 3, I'm going to have to have root 3 over 2 over a half. And this is going to need to be my y, and this is going to need to be my x since I'm talking about a tangent. We're talking about a y value for my sine. So what I have is I now have a cosine. Where is y equal to root 3 over 2 and x equal to a half, and both being positive since it's a principal value? Well, that's going to be in the first quadrant, and that's going to be a pi over 3. I'm going to use 60 degrees, though, just because it's going to be easier in this case to see. Now, where is the sine equal to root 3 over 2 in a positive sense? That's going to also be in the first quadrant, and it's going to also be at 60 degrees. So what I've got now is I have what is the cosine of 0 degrees. Cosine of 0 degrees is 1. And that's going to be my solution. So again, a lot of this is do you know your unit circle and can you remember which interval to answer between? Once again, the key thing is knowing what intervals those are. And once again, here are those intervals just in case you had missed them the first time. And we'll finishing up by giving you a couple of questions to answer.